This is a video about a crisis that so many doctors go through and this week I've been hearing some of my senior colleagues go through this crisis and I kind of wish I had known about it earlier so I thought I'd make a video about it for anyone who's interested in medicine, studying medicine or working as a doctor to learn about. And it's a crisis about the future centrism of medicine, the culture of always aiming for the next step and about delayed gratification and the balance between delayed gratification and enjoying the journey. Uh, before we get into it though, I'll just introduce myself. My name is Dr. Sill. I'm a junior doctor, I'm an intern really, uh, in Sydney, Australia. So I'm a baby in the healthcare field and I'm learning uh, and I don't want to come across like someone who has it all figured out, but I'm just spitting ideas and if you have some interesting thoughts, please leave comments in the comment section below. I'd love to read them and, and discuss them with you. If you're interested in medicine or mental health, consider subscribing or leaving the video a like, that really supports the channel. But anyway, let's get into the video. So let me tell you a story. I hope you have your cups of tea ready. I do. And it's the story of a medical student, the traditional uh, generalized obviously wrong but correct enough story and it's usually when you're a medical student you've, you've done quite well academically all right and if you've done well academically you're either lucky or well supported in, a, in both cases you're probably lucky because you have good brain or lucky because you have good supports that can help you use your uh, brain to, to learn lots of things and you've probably always been studying for exams and then achieving well in those exams and then when you finish one exam you kind of focus on the next exam and that usually starts when you're in high school right and then you hit high and then you hit college and then you do your university in Australia and that's usually six years and then you hit your early 20s you might start working and you finish medical school you start as an intern working and you start just surviving you don't really have time to think too far in the future but you're, you're just doing the jobs and when you start as an intern you have a contract with the hospital for two years so you don't need to worry about the next steps so you're just working and just you're surviving you're doing your job uh, you're trying to be a good general doctor and you rotate between different um, uh, fields. You do your surgical, your medical, your emergency and relief terms, and you don't have a choice in any of these things. You haven't had a choice since getting into medicine. You chose to do medicine and then since then you haven't really made many big decisions. But then something happens. At the end of usually your second year, in Australia it's, you do intern then residency, and it's usually at the end of residency where you have this whoa, this realization where you have to make a choice. And it's a choice about your life and what direction your life is going to go in. And it is maybe one of the biggest choices of your life. <sighs> How do you make that choice? So I've just finished this book, When Breath Becomes Air. And it's the story of a neurosurgeon who spends his whole life training for this ultimate accomplishment of becoming a neurosurgeon. Something that takes decades of training. And it's such a future focused path. And so much of medicine is, by the way. But unfortunately, towards the end of his training, he gets unwell, he develops a brain cancer and dies. And it's devastating. And I guess that was a wake up call for me to think about enjoying the day to day work that you do versus just grinding it out to get to this distant horizon of the ideal. And grinding is just such an integral part of medical culture. Everyone knows that being a doctor is really hard and you can't really complain about it because everyone's going through it. So uh, if you whinge about doing an evening shift of 12 hours, um, you know, everyone goes through it. So quit whinging, that kind of thing. And it's not a very healthy culture when, you know, most other jobs aren't that unreasonable. So I've been thinking a lot about this balance between how much I should grind and work hard now for the future, for the destination, versus how much I should just kind of enjoy my day-to-day -day life and enjoy the work and kind of see it as a marathon rather than as a sprint. And I've come to the following conclusion uh, that might be controversial and maybe I'll change my mind, but right now I just kind of think, screw delayed gratification, okay? Yes, delayed gratification is an incredibly important thing. And it was it's really important in society, actually, as a social construct that people understand that if they work hard now, they can get rewards later. But we, in medicine, value it so much that we are willing to sacrifice our health and mental health and happiness for a future that is very uncertain. I think the core point that I want to communicate is that people, human beings, homo sapiens, are not good at predicting what they will enjoy. There's a lot of research on this. 80,000 hours has a lot of blogs about it, but I guess the key studies that 
kind of exemplify this very unexpected point is you think that money would make you happier but it is very clear that people who win the lottery after they win the lottery you ask them about a month or two months after they aren't happier and often they are more stressed and worried because of the problems that money has caused and the other thing is after about 100k a year Australian dollars I think it's like 80,000 US dollars happiness doesn't increase the, the ha increase in like salary doesn't correlate with an increase in happiness okay so the ha happiness data is pretty clear. Also, people think that kids would make them happier. I want kids, by the way, not hating on kids. But people who don't have kids are seem to be just as happy. So there's all these things that you that humans just have these, I don't know, maybe socially induced ideas about what is happiness and what makes people happy. But the things that kind of make you happy are relationships, being in outdoors a little bit, good health, and enough money to meet your basic needs. It's, it's not that complicated to be happy. So I make that point to say that you just got to enjoy the journey. You have to enjoy the day to day. And maybe as an intern, there's going to be hard periods and you have to grind through a tough term. But when you choose what training program you want to do, or when you choose what career path you want to follow, it has to be one where the training is something you enjoy day to day. And it can't be like, oh, I'm going to spend 10 years of my life trying to get onto a training program to do to end up being a type of, I don't know, let's just say surgeon that, you know, you don't even know what it's like to be that surgeon. Are you really willing to gamble this opportunity cost of your life to get onto a program that, or, or to even try to just get onto a program? Because to get onto some surgical programs, it takes five years of applications and people just apply, 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 five years go by. And then sometimes they don't even get onto the program. They have to change career path anyway. So I'm not saying that you shouldn't apply for those programs, please don't get me wrong, but you just need to be really sure and do good research into what the end goal is like. So follow the consultants in their life because we're not good at predicting what jobs we will like. And I don't really know what the best way to make the best decision is. I think it's a really complicated thing where uncertainty is the rule and certainty is the exception. There are very few of us. I mean, there are some that just kind of get born and they, they pop out of their mother's womb and say, I'd like to be an orthopedic surgeon. Where do I sign up? But uh, you know, most of us are just trying to figure out this very complicated world. And I think the best way to kind of figure it out is trial and error. Because most people who are really happy in their jobs, they found their jobs through trial and error, through experience, through trying a job and finding out that they actually really enjoyed it when they worked at it, as it. But the most common thing I've heard as an intern is being a trainee versus being a consultant is super different to being an intern. The decision making kind of higher level stuff is a very different experience day to day than typing notes and doing clinical reviews and stuff as an intern. So it's really hard to make the right decision, but my kind of plan, if you're interested, is trial and error. So I think I want to be a psychiatrist. I think it. I can't know it. I don't know. How can you know? But I'm, I think it's enough to be willing to try it. So I'm going to try. I'm going to apply and I'm going to do the training because that's the only way I'll know if I like the training. I think I will. And I, you know, there's a couple of things that increase the likelihood that I'll be a good fit for it. But I can't know. And I have to be comfortable with uncertainty because the world is complicated. Humans are complicated and so much is uncertain. And we live in, I don't know, there's kind of this social pressure to be certain about your direction. It's kind of the most common thing people ask in the whole Hospital. Oh, what are you interested in training in? It's, I ask it all the time, but really the answer, instead of people saying, oh, I want to do GP or I want to do surgery, people should probably be answering more often than not. I don't know yet. It's a really complicated world, but I'm passionate and I want to try everything. So try everything. All right, that's it for this video. Remember to leave a comment below if you want to have a chat or you can subscribe and support the channel that way. I wish you all an absolutely lovely day and I'll see you in the next video. All right, bye for now.